If you are a self-proclaimed girly girl, this movie rec list is for you. In this video, I wanted to curate a list that's geared towards the girlies who appreciate good costume design, the girls who will watch a movie based on one aesthetic Tumblr gif, and of course, the girls who just love pretty things. This list will include movies that have one of the following, outfits I would literally sell my soul for, or characters with a great sense of style, or finally, it just has people wearing pretty clothes. The first movie I'm recommending is The Love Witch, directed by Anna Baylor. The story follows Elaine, who is a witch who's just looking for love. She does a bunch of witchy things in this movie, like brew potions, and snare men, and prance around in her Victorian house. Victorian house of my dreams. In terms of genre, it blends horror, comedy, and romance. My favorite thing about the movie is just the way it looks. It has super retro vintage vibes, and it doesn't feel like a movie from 2016. It's a visually stunning love letter to Technicolor movies. It was shot on 35 millimeter film. That's why it looks so different and so not of the times. Aesthetically, this movie is perfect like from the set design the hair makeup is really good and of course the clothes are good like did i literally start wearing blue eyeshadow with a sharp cat eye after watching this movie yes yes i did so for the clothes it has a little bit of everything there are some like traditional witchy like black outfits but i do love that there's a lot of delicate pastels mixed in and of course the retro theme blends into everything so there's a lot of vintage pieces exhibit a that beautiful gunny sacks dress in all its pink glory. And next on the list is a movie called Kamikaze Girls, directed by Tetsuya Nakashima. This is a Japanese movie, so you will have to watch it with subtitles. So we have this main character, Momoko. She's obsessed with Lolita fashion, but she lives in like the middle of nowhere, like a super rural town where no one like gets her style. She has no friends until she encounters Ichigo, who is a delinquent with the cool ass biker girl style. And the unlikely duo gets into some ridiculous shenanigans and deepen their friendship throughout the movie. So this movie is a classic if you were ever into Japanese fashion in the 2000s. But if you haven't seen it yet, I implore you to watch it. It's really, really good, really fun, very ridiculous and like over the top. But I think that's like the charm in it. The movie definitely doesn't take itself seriously. The character's love for clothing plays a part in the, the plot. So it's a great watch. And Momoko's struggles of being the flashy fish in a small bowl is super relatable for anyone who loves alternative fashion. And next up, we have a live action Disney film from when they weren't terrible. 101 Dalmatians is directed by Stephen Herrick and follows the story of Pongo and Perdita, two Dalmatians. Anita, who owns one of the dogs, um, is a fashion designer and she works at House of Deville, which is owned by the iconic Cruella Deville. So Perdita is pregnant with puppies and Cruella wants to buy the puppies to make a dream for a coat, which Anita sketched. Obviously, the owners refuse. Cruella gets pissed off and sends her goons to kidnap the dogs later on. Glenn Close, who plays Cruella, is basically the reason you watch this movie. The Emma Stone version doesn't compare, in my opinion. Obviously, they're different movies, but she has things like fancy cigarette holders, dramatic trains, classic red lipstick, like the works. And I also love the fake nails on her gloves. I remember as a kid, I wanted those gloves so bad. I don't know why. There's just something, there's something about it. Her aesthetic is super strong as hell. Like her whole office and her home is like super decked out. Like she lives, she lives her aesthetic. I've always loved the one scene where they're looking at the, the fashion sketch and she's making changes to it. It like turned on some part of my brain that was like super obsessed with fashion design. My bonus recommendation is 102 Dalmatians because Cruella is back with more iconic outfits. So I couldn't make a fashion related movie list without including our queen Audrey Hepburn. Funny Face is directed by Stanley Donan and the movie was released in 1957. We have Jo Stockton played by Audrey herself who works at a bookstore and her life gets upended when she gets scouted to become a fashion model. And we follow her to Paris where she's thrust into the fashion world and maybe falls in love. This movie has a lot of gorgeous shots of Audrey in beautiful clothes designed by Edith Head slash Givenchy. There are a lot of pretty scenes in Paris plus a lot of singing and dancing. So warning, this is a musical, uh, so beware. My one major fault is the male love interest. I can understand why they picked Fred Astaire to be the male love interest. He's dancing, um, but he just looks so old and like dusty compared to Audrey. So like the romance part is like not it. Like I just care about Audrey and the clothes and like the men 
Honestly, all the men in this movie are like, bleh. So just know that before you watch the movie and expect a lovely romance between two hot people because it's just Audrey. Audrey is breaking her back carrying this movie. Another movie about fashion in Paris, groundbreaking. Anthony Fabian directed Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. And while the movie isn't groundbreaking, I wanted to include it on this list because it features a character who is older and still loves fashion, and I feel like we need more movies like that. Our main character is Ada Harris, who was a cleaning lady living in the 1950s. So one day, when she is cleaning one of her client's houses, she stumbles upon a couture Dior dress, picks it up, and falls in love with it immediately. I mean, who wouldn't? Then she decides that she must have one of these pieces in her life, and we follow her making her way to Paris to achieve this goal. This movie is all about high fashion, baby. And of course, we see a lot of beautiful clothes in action. If I had to describe this movie in one word, it would be sweet. The clothes are really lovely, especially if you love the vintage 1950s new look, and it portrays the love that one can have for fashion, especially as like a regular person on the street who just loves the craftsmanship. It's definitely not a life altering movie, but it's a super warm film that just like makes you feel like happy and good inside. Next on the list is a movie that I feel like most people have probably seen, but I will still include it in case you haven't. It is Marie Antoinette directed by Sofia Coppola. The main character is none other than the Queen of France herself, but we start the story right before she becomes queen, and we're kind of following her journey into like becoming royalty. In my opinion, it's more accessible than a straight up period film if you're like not into that, and especially because they use modern music and the soundtrack. It's super appealing to teenage girls, especially aka me when this movie came out in 2006. Marie Antoinette appeals to so many aesthetics. You have the more princessy coquette outfits when she first arrives at the palace. Then as she gets older, we have a lot more like cottagecore simplistic outfits and the historical fashion girlies will also love this movie. Films about royalty that include like queens and princesses are always really fun to watch because they have different outfits for literally every occasion. But yeah, this is just a very aesthetic movie. And now we're going back to the 50s with Designing Woman directed by Vincente Minnelli. Vincente, I cannot say that. Oh my God. Anyway, so we have this reporter, Mike, who's on vacation, but still technically working, I guess. There's a deadline for a story. So he wakes up and thinks that he missed his deadline to submit his story. And then there's Marilla, who he mistakes for a prostitute at first. But then she's like, no, you idiot. I actually help you write your story and submit it um, to make your deadline. This is a romantic comedy, so naturally they end up getting married. And drama ensues when they fly back to New York. I knew I had to feature this movie because not only is Marilla a fashion designer, she wears some of the loveliest outfits ever. Like, come on, these puffy sleeves are everything. The costume designer, Helen Rose, who created the actual outfits in the movie, she was credited with the actual storyline of this movie, which obviously had a heavy focus on fashion, but I think that's why I enjoyed this one so much. In the 50s, some of the movies aren't that good or they don't have interesting storylines, but I think this one kind of stands out. It's just more fun and it holds up really well, in my opinion. Our final movie on this list is Do Revenge, directed by Jennifer Kaylin Robinson. Drea is one of the popular girls at Rose Hill Country Day High School. Her reputation spirals after her then-boyfriend releases a sex tape of her. Don't love that. Then in the summer, she meets Eleanor, who is transferring to her high school in the fall. They connect and Drea finds out that Eleanor was affected by false rumors that she kissed a girl during summer camp and that specific girl grows to Rose Hill High. So this duo hatches a plan to get back at their enemies. It's obvious that they use color really well in this movie, and I love, love, love the pastel school uniforms. Similar to other teenage classics like Clueless and Heathers, the costume designer did a really good job at creating like a memorable aesthetic. And when you think about it, a lot of the high school movies do have iconic like school outfits, whether it's a uniform or just stuff that they wear to school. So I thought it was smart that the costume designer incorporated like traditional stuff like the plaids, but updated them with the pretty pastel colors, which are a little more modern. All I can say is that the outfits are just so much fun. Drea and Eleanor have such different styles, and when they're both on screen, you can see the juxtaposition of their different personalities, and it's just fun to see like them two next to each other. 
This is another movie that has a lot to look at. There's a lot of pretty details, a lot of beautiful jewelry. In one scene, Eleanor wears these retro flower earrings and I love them so much, I went and made my own. It's not every day that a movie makes you want to do that. Though maybe if I didn't have a job, I would be doing that more often. <laughs> And that's it for the list. And if you're on Letterboxd, I do have a companion list linked below in the description. These are just the ones I pick for now because that's what I thought of, but I know there's a lot more out there. So leave your favorites and I may make a part two. And also feel free to leave your suggestions for any future movie rec lists. 